Let's talk about Mills plates. So what I'm going to do in this episode is dive a little bit deeper in this mock world. What I want to talk about is Mills plates, how they're created, and what they're for. In the last episode, you heard me talk about we were going to choose a size. That size has got down to six base plates. So what we're going to do is get right in by adding the six base plates in studio and turning them into Mills plates. Now, MIL stands for Modular Integrated Landscaping System, which is really a fancy way of kind of just saying I'm making this base plate stronger and have the ability to connect to one another. I personally believe that it all depends on if you're going to transport it or not. If you're going to transport it, it has to be built in a way that can easily be taken apart and moved, or it has to depend on the boxes that you are moving it in. Those really, really, really depend on the size of this. Um, a lot of it had to do, like in the castle, I can't have something that's 50 bricks high if I wanna put it in one of the totes I have because one of the totes I have only allows it to be somewhere around 20. Remember, this is Lego, so if it does fall apart, it can easily be rebuilt. You just wanna be able to move it from your house where you're building it or wherever you're doing it at to the convention or displayed area safely. So now that we have got our six base plates laid down, so what we're gonna do next is grab bricks. That way they can be evenly place to distribute the weight now i'm going to show you two different ways to use these one is using the two by twos and one is using the two by fours how i have always done is kind of got a random color it does not matter if you go to someone's bricklink store always pick a random color that really just kind of depends on the price what you want to do is you want to place them in here evenly that way it'll hold the weight now how you really come about that it's finding the plates you're gonna use. I always use these 16 by 16s. So what we're gonna do, since our base plate is white and we have the green bricks, to give this a little better view, we're gonna turn the base plates blue and we're gonna turn these 16 by 16 plates dark bluish gray. So the easy way to do this is really just kind of figure out where you want to go and where you want the support to be. So if you lay this up beside it, what I always do is take the one up top you're going to want to come down here and lay another one now i lay this one like this then come in here in the middle and find the even space between these two and click that down and then kind of do the same thing by grabbing the plate bring it up here setting it down finding that this is another even place and then you just kind of mimic of what's going on on the other side now that we have that one of the things i will tell you we need to do is you need to add one here you need to add one in the middle. Now, this is never going to equal the same amount, but you kind of just put it in the best place you can. And I always offset this one away from this one. Now that we've done that, what that allows you to do is put this plate on here and it gives you the stability of having something in the middle so it's not going to sag. And then you just continue this throughout the whole thing and you'll eventually get this. Now that the 16 by 16 plates are installed, now this right here is kind of the base level that you will be building on. What you're basically gonna do is use this as like ground zero. So if you ever want to add terrain to make it taller to where it goes down, I normally build that up on top of here and use it to come down. I never really go below the surface because it starts ruining of what you just built. And we don't need that to happen. We need the strength of this. That's kind of why we're making them. Now, when using a two by two, and four by four plates, you do that even differently. What you're gonna do here is let's say dark red is the cheapest one we can find. You're gonna replace that here and we're gonna go get a four by four plate. Now the four by four plate, we can turn to any color we want, but we're gonna stick with that dark bluish gray. If you put it on top of here, you see that you kind of have to put supports here, here, and here. So if you continue that out, that is pretty much one every other block so you're going to skip two studs in between all this and then one at the end now on the two by fours it normally takes about 25 of them a plate and as you can see right here we're already at 18. we're just going to continue now to fill up this and boom this is what we end up with now as you can see between these two they basically are the exact same thing. It's just the amount of pieces you used in them. So it really kind of depends on what you want to do. These base plates in 16 by 16 normally run from like $2.75 
anywhere to like five dollars or more depending on the color four by fours are extremely cheap but if you got to buy a hundred of them kind of really depends on how much you can get one of these 16 by 16s for now the next big thing about building a mills plate kind of depends on how you're going to view it now if this is the edge of the build you can do this one of two ways if you want to create this and then create a border to build around it you can or you can actually use part of the mills plate as the border now the only thing that really ruins is you want the border to be one solid color and if you use a plate in between it, it kind of ruins it or it just looks like it's sitting on top of it. So what I'm going to do on this mock is we're going to create the border around it afterwards. Now the next big step into here to show you kind of what I like to do is coming down here and getting these Technic bricks. Now you take both of these bricks, we're going to turn them into a random color. And this is really the key component of how you're going to mate all this together. Now, the problem with using this one with the Technic pin hole that I do not like is the pins are cheaper, yes, but when you go to push them together, you're going to actually have to try to apply pressure. You have a chance of snapping something and something coming apart, and there's a little bit of an easier way. Now, in this build, I'm actually going to show you how to use both of them, and the reason for that is the border. Now, this right here will be on the outside, and keep applying it around the edges. That way, we have the ability to create the border and attach it to it at the end. Now, I just add to one to every corner. That way that it could just be ran on the outside. And like I said, I'll show you in a later video and explain really what I do with those. Now, you take this, and it's the one with the axle pinhole. And the reason why I like using the axle hole so much better is because they make this little axle. What we're going to do is turn this bad boy red. We're going to stick it right in here and what it does is kind of creates the perfect mating surface for you to be able to put another one across from it now of course this right here does not match up to this so what we're going to simply do is take this base plate delete it and then come over here and grab the big one that we created and basically copy it now while copying it you do have to remember that i did set up some of the stuff for the border so what we're going to do is make sure the border is on the outside and apply it just like that now let me speed up put all these together and make sure we got the axle holes in the inside and the pin holes on the outside one quick thing i want to show you before we jump to all of them together is if you pop this off while we have the axle bricks in here, if you were to go to put an axle in, it has the ability to get pushed behind. The next little thing that I do, and it might be a part to where you're gonna spend a little unneeded money, is I come in and put these bricks behind there, cannot be pushed all the way through. Now remember the pins cannot, but the axles can. Now let's go ahead and finish our base plates off. Now that is all done, we have our six base plate foundation. So now that we have this, what we really need to do is plan the land. How do we want the terrain? Do we want it to be raised? Do we want it to be lower? Do we want it to be flat? All that really goes into the build and what you're trying to accomplish. Now in this, I want to show you a little bit of all three. I want it to be raised, I want it to be lowered, and I want it to be flat. I want to put a building on this so I can show you some other stuff that I do and kind of give an example of every little thing. From here, what we need to do is kind of plan out what we want. What I think we need to do is put a base for the characters and kind of give them a little home and maybe do a corner build to where it's on these six plates right here and it separates base plate to base plate so I can show you how I can create that to make it modular and leave the back open to kind of show the interior. That will allow us to do all the land out here. Who knows why we're building this, we might even decide to go bigger. So this week we're gonna stop there. We have our six base plates down. Now what we need to do is pretty much design the terrain and how we wanna bring this build to life. I remember in every build like this, you kinda of wanna tell a story. So one of the things that we've gotta do is also develop a story. Now we know we're doing Star Wars. We know there's gonna be a base. We know there's gonna be some water. There's gonna be some mountains. There's gonna be some flat land. There's gonna be maybe a tunnel to go underground or something like that. So one of the first things we're going to have to do in the designing process is also figure out how high and how low we want this terrain to be. This is where a lot of that skill comes into play. You can't really start and not have an idea because you're going to pretty much just end up taking things apart. If you jump right in and start building and then you decide you want to go taller because you have to make it work for this or you want to go smaller in the river, you pretty much are going to have to restart the whole thing. So that's where the planning really starts to help. So next week what we're going to do is kind of talk about how I plan things 
things, how I go about it, and make sure the design will work moving forward when you start placing the bricks down on the plates. But I would like to thank everybody for watching this. Remember, if you like this series, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's keep this community growing. Let's keep building. Let's keep doing awesome things. Thank you for watching. Peace.